Chapter 2. The Law of Flow. Concept. Everyone can get their head around the idea that abundance flows. We watch it daily, flowing and not flowing. Here's the subtle trick to being in the flow. But first, let me remind you that a positive attitude goes almost without saying. The more you moan and affirm you don't have enough money, the more it slips from your grasp. Maddening, really. But when it slips away, that of itself becomes a negative affirmation of how unfair the system seems to be. Of course, it isn't unfair. It's just energy in motion, responding to feelings. To those that have, more shall be added. And to those who don't have, a chunk will be taken away. So the first rule of flow is to constantly tell your mind you are rich. There are many manifestations of wealth that aren't necessarily cash. Love, friendship, nature, sweet sensations, pleasing emotions, etc., etc. Rich is a way of viewing life. So tell yourself, I want to view the world with a kindly eye. I want to view it richly. Remember, your unconscious mind, the powerhouse of your soul, doesn't know if you're rich or not. If you tell it you're rich, it will accept that as gospel. You have to believe in luck and flow and goodness, even when cash-wise, things might be bloody awful. Perhaps it goes against the grain, but if you see your affirmations as just that, affirmations, you can affirm your abundance and good fortune, even when things look a bit dodgy. The poorest person has things to be thankful for, so affirming your abundance is an act of gratitude and humility, as well as a way of keeping yourself in the flow. People get into trouble understanding flow because they can't tell the difference between effort and struggle. So they'll get an idea and everything tells them it's not working, and yet they plug away doggedly going through the agony of it all. Because someplace back there somewhere, someone told them that whacking their head against the wall was an honorable way of conducting themselves. Not quite so. Struggle causes a lot of pain because it involves a lot of negative emotion. Struggle is also very hard work. All ideas that are holy and good and honest, ideas that serve humanity and yourself, will have a positive energy of their own. When you head out to materialize a money-making plan, it will gather momentum. It's as if the universe at large leads you step by step, showing you the way. That's flow. You meet the right people. You sit in the right seat on the plane, and next to you is the very person you need to connect with. It's a wonderful thing watching flow in motion. We all know what it looks like when it's working. The trick is to be able to pull back when things aren't flowing. As I said in my little book, Life Was Never Meant to Be a Struggle, struggle is effort laced with emotion. As humans, we are required to exert effort to get things done. So if you're cycling up a hill delivering loaves of bread, you'll expend calories peddling. Effort is natural. When one's energy expenditure gets wrapped in loads of negative emotion, that's when you flip to the unnatural, from effort to struggle. At that point, you should pull back and ask yourself loads of simple questions, questions that highlight silliness. Of course, you need perseverance when times are tough, but perseverance mustn't trip you into negative emotion. That will destroy your dream real quick. So if things aren't flowing, watch the signs very carefully. What little adjustments can you make to get things moving? Is your plan realistic? Do you have the wherewithal to pull it off? Are you missing some component? If you're missing a piece of the jigsaw, what does that piece look like? Is the piece inside you, or where will you get the bit you need? It's okay to go up the path a little way, only to discover it's not right for you. As long as you realize when things aren't working, and pull back. The trick is to evaluate and ask yourself, is this a stupid idea or not? Am I going about it ass backwards or what? Do I need this suffering or is my suffering voluntary? Remember, it's not a defeat to pull back when things aren't right. You can always wait for things to change. The fool plugs away regardless of the signs. If you are aware, you'll pull back or perhaps continue slowly forward, watching carefully, making adjustments as you go. Remember, don't be impatient. Things always take longer to materialize than you think they will. 
That's because our minds can move faster than the 3D reality in which we all exist. Also, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fail sometimes. See these as mini-seminars you attend to teach you the tricks of life. Of course, the main trick is to be flexible and easygoing and light-hearted. And to learn, learn, learn. Life's a seminar. We learn by stuffing it up. So be kind to yourself. Although flow often seems a form of magic, it actually stems initially from order and planning. It's much easier to experience a great good fortune when you're organized and ready and able to receive the abundance due to you. So ask yourself, am I ready? If someone shows up right now with my special opportunity, can I respond? Am I flexible? Can I move and go in an instant? Flow is energy in motion. So you have to become the embodiment of energy in motion, i.e. flexible, fluid, and fast on your feet. In passing, let's look at risk and reward. To make money, you will have to take risks, even if it's just your time on the line. The key to risk-taking is knowledge. For example, gambling is betting on an unknown outcome. Investing is betting on known possibilities. The difference is knowledge and the quality of your information. So when the amateur blackjack player is pitching his money on the run of the cards, he's gambling. But the professional card player has knowledge and additional information. He can count cards as they come past and make informed decisions about what is to happen next. He's not gambling. He's investing his money in a planned and reasonable way on what might seem to others a random outcome. His knowledge and ability change the random nature of the game into one of near certainty. He is not struggling, he's working, just as the croupier and cocktail waitress are working. So struggle can be avoided by collecting information, lots of it, learning and watching and topping up on your game of life. Moving through life with ability and knowledge, you go from gambling on life to investing in life. We all have to accept risk. Crossing the street is a risk, just one we're used to. The trick is to have enough information so that you're betting on outcomes that are almost certain. When the outcome isn't certain, you ought to design your involvement to ensure there's an easy and inexpensive escape route. Remember, as I've said before elsewhere, never go into anything without figuring out where the exit is. Never commit until you have to, and not until you have enough information. Try to make sure there's a back door to whatever commitment you make, unless, of course, you're very, very sure of your involvement. The metaphysics of flow is easy to comprehend. You figure it with your feelings. Your feelings are enormously powerful. They are your extrasensory perception. The mind can deduce from what it already knows and guess at an outcome. And millions are lost every day using this intellectual guessing method. But your feelings are more accurate, for everything is energy. So any deal or investment or any involvement with others has an energy of its own. That is its thumbprint, if you like. Use your feelings to stay in the flow and keep away from trouble. Remember, if an idea feels wrong, it is wrong. That's not to say that you should trash a deal whenever you have a moment of disquiet. It's just to say, if suddenly there's an energy shift, you're in tune with your feelings. That shift will alert your feelings. When something feels odd, stop and notice and take stock. Your feelings guide you away from trouble. Half the trick to making money and being in flow is staying away from deals that don't work. It's the deals you walk away from that make you rich as much as the successful deals. So put your feelings into everything. Meditate and become a satellite for your subtle feelings. The way to build up your sensitivity is to ask, ask, ask. Constantly refer back to your feelings to confirm your direction. If you're in a meeting, mentally reach out to the other people there and imagine your arm extending to touch them in the heart. Then mentally pull your arm back quickly while centering your mind blanking it, and ask, how does this person feel? Edgy, arrogant, angry, excited, crooked, 
safe, loving, kind, and so on. Your first impression will be the correct one. The litmus test to referring to your feelings should be used many times a day. Energy shifts constantly, so you'll want to be aware, especially when dealing with other people. How does this situation or person feel right now? How is it different from the way it felt last time I checked in? Is this deal I'm considering for real? Or has something changed? What's the upside? What's the downside? Is the downside far greater than the upside? Is the risk worth taking? Then ask yourself how you feel. Are you happy, comfortable, flowing along? Or is there something bothering you? Staying in the flow is only really a matter of staying close to your feelings. Struggle comes from a lack of awareness of self and from poor quality information. It is also compounded by the inability to turn back when the energy on a particular path peters out. Stay in the pocket. Be aware. Shift and change. And never get into anything you can't walk away from. Keep these rules and you will always be in the flow. Action. The action of flow is one of being alive and aware, ready to step forward fearlessly. You have to move towards your target. So do something each and every day that improves your situation and takes you closer to your dream. Sometimes that action may just be a simple thing that grants you more stability or more order. Like perhaps you take a day out to tidy up your paperwork. Order of itself is a positive thing, is it not? Rarely do opportunities find you. Usually you have to be moving towards them. So heighten your ability to stay in the flow by heading out, talking to people, making contacts, stepping out from where it's safe and cozy, pushing against your comfort zones, reaching out. That's how the faucet of flow is turned on, by generating energy each day so that the universe at large can engage its magnificent laws and deliver to you even more energy. Try this. As well as moving towards your goals physically, through action, say, simultaneously clear a path on an inner level by blowing love and light out ahead of you. For example, if there's a person in your way, your boss, say, start every morning by sitting quietly and seeing her or him in your mind's eye. Bring them up close to you so you're almost eyeball to eyeball. Then breathe a long breath in and expel that breath out into their heart. No matter how antagonistic you may feel, send them light and love. Do that ceremoniously 11 times. They will change. You'll see. If you need them out of your way, don't wish them harm or evil. Just do this. After you've finished the 11 breaths, visualize them very small in the palm of your hand. Look down on them from above. Look at them standing there in your hand, an inch high, say. Then hold your hand up to your mouth and expel a short, sharp breath at them. Literally, blow them away, saying, I release you with love and light. Go in peace to your highest good, but go. Using this method, I got rid of a bothersome IRS tax agent who'd been harassing me for 18 months. A few days of this metaphysical hurricane, and he quit the service. The next bloke assigned to my case was so overworked and confused and stressed out that he closed my file with no more objections. If, say, you're off to an important meeting today, breathe in the location if you know it. See it in your mind's eye if you've been there before. Or visualize the people. Or at worst, just imagine the meeting. Breathe in 11 times and see love and light to that location. Remember to tell your mind approximately what time the meeting will be. So say, I'm projecting this love and light to such and such a location for use between the hours of noon and two o'clock or whatever. Use your inner power equally with your outer strength. That inner power places good energy ahead of you. It gets rid of dodgy people and helps close the gap between you and mind.